the Megalodon, an extinct giant shark, and the Tyrannosaurus, one of the most ferocious and skilled predators among the land dinosaurs. These are some of the most fearsome monsters ever found in fossil form. Hello everyone. These popular monsters aren't the only creatures that paleontology has revealed so far. Other various creatures that are larger, more dangerous, or simply scarier looking have been discovered. For example, have you ever heard of the Zygovisitor or the Asdarkidae? If you haven't, don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to or back to our channel. We'll be sharing information about all these creatures and much more with you. Let's get started. Asdarkidae When bird species were still new to this world and only had a small population, pterosaurs ruled the skies. Pterosaurs are a group of carnivorous reptiles of various sizes that had the ability to fly. One of the most popular of these groups is the pterodactyl. However, the diversity of pterosaurs doesn't stop there. One particularly fascinating creature is the pterosaurs of the family Asdarkidae, known for their large size, long necks, and lack of teeth. This group is classified as the largest and most dangerous group of flying animals known to biology. Within the Azudarukidae family are species such as the Quetzalcoatlus, Hatzagoteryx, and Arambulgia. These creatures are known to have had a wingspan of over 12 meters. The smaller species of the Asdarkidae family seem to have fed mainly on fish. However, some scientists believe that the previously mentioned pterosaurs may have been able to prey even on large dinosaurs. Their ability to fly made them very fearsome and excellent predators. What would have happened if Megalodons lived during the late Cretaceous period, when the Asdarkidae were kings of the skies? The Hatzigaterex, which had the ability to fly over the sea, might have tried to attack a distracted Megalodon as a snack. To be completely honest, the Megalodon would not have stood a chance against the Hatzigaterex. There would have been no choice but for the Megalodon to retreat into the deep sea, where the giant pterosaur can't possibly pursue it. Purasaurus Dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and ichthyosaurs are all reptiles, but they do not belong to any group of reptiles that currently exist in our world. Genetically speaking, Dinosaurs have only as much in common with lizards, snakes, turtles, and crocodiles as humans do with cats. Just like how the only similarity between cats and humans is that both are mammals. Reptiles such as lizards, snakes, and others that were previously mentioned survived the mass extinction between the Cretaceous and Paleogene periods. On the other hand, their relatives, and sometimes predators, the dinosaurs, became extinct in an instant. In the Miocene Epoch, about 8 million years ago, the creatures at the top of the food chain appeared in freshwater areas such as lakes and rivers on the South American continent. This creature was a giant crocodile, Purosaurus, which belonged to the subfamily Caimaninae. Experts now know that there were three species of the Purosaurus. The largest species was known to have been 16 meters, making it the largest crocodile known to biology. The Purosaurus seemed to have fed on nearly every creature around it, everything from capybaras to river dolphins. The Megalodon rarely entered rivers and lakes, but if it had, 
the Purosaurus would have put up a good fight against it. Perhaps they could have gotten their hands on some good shark meat. Danosuchus Crocodiles aren't known to be creatures that are hungry from a lack of prey, even in the age of dinosaurs. The evidence for this information is the presence of the Danosuchus, a large and dangerous predator. These creatures inhabited the area that is now known as the United States and Mexico about 80 to 73 million years ago. A distant relative of today's alligators, the Danosuchus were about 12 meters in size and weighed up to 8.5 tons. We don't know whether the Danosuchus were aggressive predators or if they specialized in ambush. In either case, its teeth would have been able to chew through the shell of any turtle. The Danosuchus occupied the top of the food chain in its habitat, as did the Purosaurus in later times. It lived mainly in brackish waters, at the mouths of large rivers, and may have also been in the ocean and open seas. They are also known to have preyed on all kinds of creatures. These include turtles and large fish, aquatic and marine reptiles, and even careless dinosaurs that got too close to the shore. If we were to compare it to the Megalodon, we would say the same thing as we did about the Purosaurus. It would definitely put up a strong fight. Spinosaurus The Spinosaurus was a predator that lived in the Cretaceous period in areas that are now known as Africa and South America. They were the largest of the carnivorous dinosaurs and only had the Tyrannosaurus to compare in terms of its ecological status. The Spinosaurus weighed between 12 and 20 tons and was up to 16 meters long. Its most distinctive feature was the huge hump on its back. Although it's difficult to imagine its function, it was probably some sort of radiator that radiated excess heat to its surroundings. There is, however, a key to reveal the answer to that certain question. That key is determining whether the Spinosaurus was purely a terrestrial predator or a semi-aquatic predator. The debate over the answer continues to this day. Even if a Spinosaurus fought with a Tyrannosaurus, it is believed to have a good chance of winning. The sharks that swim in shallow water scare tourists to this day. What if the Spinosaurus was placed in that kind of environment? If these creatures had lived during the same time as the Megalodon, they would surely have been able to handle a fight against the giant sharks. Platybelodon In the current day, Elephants are the largest and strongest of all land mammals. They are known to be large, beautiful, and intelligent creatures. Their ancestors were also quite strong creatures whose power could be compared to megalodons. About 15 million years ago, in the Miocene Epoch, the Platybelodon inhabited what is now known as the African savanna. These creatures were 6 meters long and about 3 meters tall, comparable to today's savanna elephants. However, there was one additional feature to the Platybelodon that made them extremely dangerous. This feature was their tusks. The modern-day elephant has two tusks. In comparison, the Platybelodon had two tusks in its long lower jaw and two more at the base of its upper jaw, with a total of four tusks. The power of this natural weapon must have been so powerful that even a large predator could not stand against it. The tusks on the lower jaw of the Platybelodon was believed to have had the function of something between a shovel and a sickle. Using this, they should have been able to dig up tree roots and cut through branches. It must also have been a weapon to protect themselves with. What would have happened if the Platybelodon traveled through time into the Cretaceous period and encountered a Tyrannosaurus? 
With a powerful blow from a platy belladon, it's likely that even the giant dinosaur would have second thoughts. It would probably think it might be better to look for other unprotected prey. In addition, if these giant elephants confronted the Megalodon, would the Megalodon have been killed by the Platybelodon's deathly fangs? Please leave your ideas and thoughts in the comment section below. Zygophysitor The sperm whale is currently one of the very largest and most dangerous marine animals. These creatures can be up to 20 meters long and weigh up to 40 tons. They are the largest predators in the ocean and sometimes hunt in packs. While sperm whales may have once been smaller in previous times, the fact that they were extremely dangerous creatures does not change. The Zygophysitor valeri, which lived in the late Miocene, six million years ago, might have been a distant relative of the sperm whale. Their fossils have been found in Italy. The size of the Zygophysitor may seem modest compared to the Megalodon and modern sperm whales. After all, it was only seven meters long. Of course, size isn't everything. Zygophysitors have very large and sharp teeth. This means they could easily hunt large prey and also effectively defend themselves against other predators. In addition, since they are related to whales, they could use echolocation, meaning that they had the power to produce ultrasounds that could pick apart their surroundings. For this reason, it would have been difficult for the Megalodon to plan a surprise attack. At the very least, if such a predator tried to approach the Zygophysitor, it would have had ample time to swim away. Maybe it would have even been prepared for a fight. Still, if the Zygophysitor had fought with the Megalodon, it is believed to have a small chance of survival. This concludes today's video. Thank you all for watching until the end. We hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give this video a like, and share this episode on your social networking sites. Thank you all in advance. We're going to leave you for a little while now. See you in another video. Goodbye.